Hi guys! Hello! Stan, what's the hottest trend in Tumblr engraving right now? I don't know, Len. Why don't you tell us? Full wraps, of course! Wow. Those are amazing, but they're too hard to do, Len. Not for me. Well, if you have a process, if you have a process, it's not too bad. That's why we made this video. And today we're gonna show you how to do a full 360 wraps on tumblers from start to finish. These are the hardest type of engravings you can do on your laser machine. Yeah, for the perfect full wrap, you will need a perfectly calibrated rotary that won't skip a beat. And fortunately, the Pyburn 4.0 is exactly that kind of rotary. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, here's the final result of the engraving, and you can do it too. Look, you see that. That is so cool. How did you manage to do this black engraving on a stainless steel tumbler? Ah, glad you asked. This is actually a 32 Ozark Trail tumbler I got from Walmart. And it had black powder coat finish. I chose my graphics in such a way that the laser would burn off all the black finish and would just leave these uh, black uh, cat shapes. So I believe it's called reverse mask method. It was done kind of in reverse from normal engraving people usually do. Mm, clever. And so this was actually done on a standard Pyburn 4.0 on our Aeon Mira 7 laser yep. machine. So I understand that this engraving was especially challenging because of the size and the shape of the tumbler. I mean, here it's got a larger diameter and it's much smaller and it's tapering down. So how did you manage to align the engraving like this? Oh, that's the coolest part. I don't have to do anything special for the smallest tapered part because mm -hmm. the largest part of the tumbler is on the main rotary wheels the smaller diameter section will rotate less relative to the large diameter. This causes image to self-align. It does distort graphics just a little bit at the bottom. As you can see, these cats are a little bit skinnier, but overall it looks mm. fine. Just keep this in mind when you're, packing a pa when you're picking a pattern for engraving. And don't worry, we'll go over the whole process, but here's the quick overview. First, I will measure the engraving area of the tumbler. Then I, will do quick <laughs> then I will do quick calibration of the rotary and small test engraving on painter's tape to make sure the calculations are correct. Most important part of the tutorial is setting up graphics for seamless repeating texture. Then we'll upload the file to the light burn, adjust settings and send it to the laser for engraving. Okay, well this all almost sounds too easy. Can't wait to see how it really works in practice. Well, it's never too easy with wraps. It took me almost two days to get everything just right. So be, pre so be prepared to have at least one sacrificial tumbler or two. I was lucky and I only ruined one. <laughs> well, good point, Len. Tip of the day, don't be afraid to ruin a tumbler. All right then, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll start by measuring our tumbler circumference. One way you can do this is by using flexible fabric tape. Or an even better way is to use calipers and check the diameter of the largest part of the tumbler. Then multiply this number by a number pi and you will get approximate circumference. You will also need to measure the length of the area you want to engrave. In my case, I measured from the lip to the bottom. Next, check if your rotary is calibrated and then do an engraving on painter's tape. Put at least two layers of painter's tape over the tumbler. If possible, don't cover part of the tumbler that will be in contact with the main rotary wheels. Open light burn and create a thin and tall rectangle with height of your object circumference. Change speed to max and power to slide above minimum that your laser will fire. For example, about 12%. As long as it can mark tape but not burn through it. Test it over some scraps, do it in the flat mode rather than on rotary. We suggest changing scan angle to minus 180. Set start from, drop down to user origin and choose job origin to be in the top right corner. Send your job to the laser. Load tumbler on the rotary and focus the laser head over the tape. Before engraving, let's test if your rotary is properly calibrated. Draw a short horizontal line on tape with marker. Position your red dot laser over it and press origin button. Load file of the square that you made earlier. 
and press frame button to check if rotary does full 360 degree rotation and adds up on the line. If it's off by more than a few millimeters, check your steps per rotation or diameter settings. See our 100 mm test video tutorial. Now position red laser dot in the same place away from the line you drew, so you can see engraving results better. Check that your Y coordinates are just a little more than 0 mm to avoid slap over error. Press the origin button and start engraving. Wait for the job to finish and check the result. Assuming ends didn't meet or overlap by a very small amount, up to a couple millimeters, adjust your graphics size. If ends didn't meet, measure by how much and increase height of your graphics. If ends overlap, measure by how much and decrease height of your graphics. Test again. Keep in mind that it's always better to overlap ends slightly rather than have a gap. Thickness of the tape will add to the circumference slightly, so take that into account. We highly recommend to also test this on a scrap tumbler of the same size. Now comes the most important part of the tutorial. How to get the repeating seamless pattern to fit on your object. We will be working with Adobe Illustrator. Please pay no attention to my poor Illustrator skill, you will probably have a better way of accomplishing this task, so just follow the gist of it. First, find or create seamless pattern that you want to use in vector format. In my case, I use these cats. Open pattern file in Illustrator. Perform some basic cleanup tasks if needed. For example, in my case, the pattern had extra objects, the white cats, and some hidden parts not visible outside of the artboard. So first, I trimmed out invisible parts by using the Pathfinder's crop command. Then I isolated the white cat shape, chose all shapes with the same fill, and deleted them. This leaves the basic black outline that I needed. I copied this object and created a new document with the exact size of my engraving area. This is very important. Width was the circumference of the tumbler, 318 mm in my case, and height was the length, which was 180 mm. I pasted my pattern into this document, and here comes the main formula. In order to have a perfect, seamless engraving, the pattern must be resized to either take the whole width of the document exactly or repeat two or more times without going over the maximum document width. You'll probably never want to use pattern that covers the whole width of the document, so in most cases you'll want it to be repeated two or three times. It all depends on the design and the amount of details you want to have. Personally, I repeat all my patterns two times. So let's resize it accordingly. Our width circumference is 318 millimeters. Let's divide it by 2 and you will get 159. So change the width of your pattern to this number and now you can fit two in the document side by side, exactly. Now copy pattern and paste and align it exactly next to the first one. Align it to the leftmost edge. I recommend turning on smart guides for this. I move the top part of the pattern slightly higher than the document edge for aesthetic purposes. Make sure that first, both patterns align perfectly and seamlessly, and second, both patterns take the exact width of the document. 318 millimeters in this case combined. Now let's take care of the height. I had some blank space left on the bottom, so I grouped two patterns, copy and pasted them and aligned them perfectly at the bottom. Our graphics are now sticking past the top and bottom edges of the document, so we'll want to trim them. Create a rectangle, fill it with any color and no stroke. Make it the exact size of the document artboard. In my case, 318 by 180 millimeters. Align it to the artboard perfectly. Music 
Now select all objects, right click and choose make clipping mask. Spillover parts are still there but invisible. Select all objects and choose merge option from Pathfinder. Next part is optional. I wanted to clean up small parts of the pattern on top that would get cut off anyway, so I filled them with black rectangle and merged them using Pathfinder. Now we have a clean pattern with the correct size ready to be engraved. Save the file to the disk and import it into Lightburn. Check the preview to see how engraving would look like. In this case it looked great with black parts being burned away and the white cat's shapes remaining. Rotate the image by 90 degrees because it will be engraved on tumbler sideways. Adjust power, speed and other settings for your machine. Speaking of power, I used more than normal because parts of the tumbler will be out of focus. Let's set up our tumbler and engrave it. Just one more thing you might need to do before engraving. If your tumbler has an engraved logo from the manufacturer, it could cause some problems. Easiest way to deal with it is to use aluminum duct tape. Cut out the shape that will cover the logo and stick it on top. Laser will not engrave through this. Now place the tumbler on your rotary. Level it and set the correct focal distance from the tip of the nozzle to the tumbler. Because we have a tumbler with different diameters, we can't really have the whole area in focus, so you'll need to compromise. Focus lower than normal on the top part. This way the bottom part will not be too far away from the nozzle. Lenses with focal length of 2 inches or larger will have sufficient depth of field, but as I mentioned earlier, you'll want to increase your power just a bit. Do a quick framing and start engraving. Hopefully your engraving came out great. For me, it took two tries. On the first one, edges of the engraving were overlapping too much. Somehow I didn't notice this when I was doing testing on the tape. So I had my tumbler ruined. And since it was ruined, I just used it without tape to engrave another test shape. This one I made shorter by 3 millimeters. I saw that this time it was good, so I adjusted final image size by the same amount before engraving. Thank you very much for following this tutorial. If you are looking to buy or upgrade your rotary, please support us by purchasing a Pyburn. It's the most versatile rotary on the market. And please subscribe and hit that bell button to see more tutorial videos on this channel.